Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. How's it going? As you can hopefully immediately tell, especially after I just pushed that button, I um, I forgot my rec- I didn't forget my recording equipment. I'm having a problem with one of the cords. I can't tell if the cord got stepped on and it's fucked up, or the jack to my computer's messed up. But I've learned in life to not force things because you just make a bad situation a little worse. So uh, I'm just gonna have to record this one uh like this and maybe monday because i'm on the road right now i'm out here in nashville tennessee nashville tennessee home of the grand Ole opry and that fucking river that overflows in the the evil looking building downtown other than that wonderful people great food and all that type of shit um i'm out here for one day and one day only i know you guys probably think well what the fuck bill you didn't advertise it on your goddamn Website, are you doing a stand-up show? I am not. What I am doing is uh, I'm doing a panel thing for F is for Family with uh, the great Mike Price, co-creator co-creator of the show from uh, The Simpsons. We're doing like a live thing where they show an episode and then we answer some questions um, hosted by Russell Peters. And it's going to be on um, XM Sirius. I don't know what channel, of course, because I'm a moron, but that's basically what I'm doing here. And then I go off to uh, Calgary tomorrow morning. Calgary, Edmonton, and then Seattle. So, oh, do I got some stories for you? I hope these levels are okay. I did my best with them. Um, This was my plane ride out to Nashville. So we rode all day. And then uh, I took the red eye out. And um, the dude who sat next to me on the fucking plane, God bless him. But he's one of these guys, man. If he doesn't turn it around, he's not going to see 50 because he was one of those guys who was abusing his body so bad. Like I can't, like when I go, go to guess his age, it's going to, he was either like 26 to 28 or like 37. (laughs) I couldn't tell. But he looked as old as me. Um, He looked like he was, if he was my age, you're like, dude, you got like another two years. Because if you fucking did that to yourself for close to 48 years, you would be done. This fucking guy, man, holy shit. He put on a display. All right. So, you know, it's late at night and take the red eye, like I said, 11 p.m. And I got the aisle. He's got the window. Right. And fortunately, my sciatica is is almost but gone away. And um, I've just been, you know, taking it easy. And uh, it's just sort of naturally working itself out while doing all the all the stretches and all that shit. So anyways, he's got the fucking window seat. And I'm thinking I'm being smart. I did the aisle thing because, all right, if I need to stretch, I can just step out into the aisle and I won't have to step over anybody. Because um, I fucked up last time I went to St. Louis I flew southwest and I wasn't thinking. I just went to the window seat and then I was trapped, you know, on the other side of two other people. So this time I'm thinking I'm being smart. But it turns out my back feels great and now all I want to do is go to sleep. And this fucking guy, man, holy shit. This guy was like crushing the fucking airport bar. I I, I don't know how many fucking Jack and Cokes this guy drank, but he just kept going like the, the guy would... He would just go, can I get another one? And then the guy would bring it over and he'd be like, my dude, thank you, right? (laughs) For some reason he said, my dude. And then he would just be sucking these things down. And he was one of these fucking guys that was so out of shape. Like he snored while he was awake. You know what I mean? He did the noises this guy makes, right? So after about, I don't know, like fucking five of these things, we're in the flight, I'm starting to nod off. He fucking goes to step over me, mountain of a man, goes to step over me, you know, which, of course, sort of wakes me up, and he goes into the the bathroom, and I notice he's wearing his socks. Fucking animal. This guy is, like, trying to kill himself from all sides. You know what I mean? Death comes from the mouth, but he's also trying to fucking speed it up, try to go into the express lane by bringing a little in through the fucking pores of the bottom of his feet. People. It's not your fault that you weren't raised right, but you got to look around in life, okay? You got to do the fucking math. I almost think, what do you think is grosser? 
to, to be in your bare feet or in your socks. I know initially the bare feet is work, worse, but there's something about the socks just absorbing it. And like, you know, the next day, if you put them on again, after you took a shower, you still got the fucking shit in because it's going into your feet no matter what. One of the grossest things. So the entire fucking flight, this guy is just pounding Jack and Cokes. I mean, he had he must have had like nine of them on like a, uh, I don't know how long that flight is, like four fucking hours, and I'm trying to sleep, and I can't get to sleep because, you know, he's a big guy. He's a cool guy. He was trying to step over. You know, at one point I, I, I did that Vietnamese gambler squat, and he's like, he goes, what are you doing? You praying over there? You all right? And I said, no, I got to I got a sciatic nerve issue. And he goes, oh, man, that sucks. So I couldn't get mad at him because he was friendly. But every time he went to step over me, he'd fucking wake me up. And then I'd look, and he'd be going into the bathroom just wearing his socks. And it just was driving me fucking nuts. So finally, all I'm thinking is, oh, my God, when this fucking mountain of a man goes down, like, he is going to snore. Like, uh, I mean, I've never had the displeasure of sleeping next to Terry Saragusa, whatever's Tony Saragusa, but I imagined he was going to sound like whatever that guy sounds like at like two o'clock in the fucking morning, right? But it was the weirdest thing. He was snoring while he was awake, but when he was when he went to sleep, he didn't make a fucking sound. And uh, oh, he kept dropping his fucking iPhone. He had his shoes off, and just the noises he was trying to make to try to pick it up. It's like, why the fuck would you do to that? Do that to yourself. These fucking people that treat their own bodies like a rental car, I just don't understand it. It's like you can't return this fucking thing at the end of the weekend. You got to keep – this is the vessel that's going to bring you around for your fucking life. You know, I mean I should talk the way I fucking booze, but you know, I still do my jumper jacks and I, I do a couple of cartwheels to keep the stomach down. You know, So anyways, the flight fucking ends. My travel is all fucked up for whatever reason, and um, I'm basically – by the time they booked my hotel, everything was sold out. So I had a hotel for the night, but I couldn't check in until three in the afternoon. So I go, you know, so they booked me at another hotel. And the person, you know, the travel person goes, so you got to check in at this hotel, you know, at 530 in the morning and then check out at 12 and then check in for the other places. It is like at 3 p.m. It's like, is that cool? And I'm like, no, it's not cool. Like, do you ever travel? Is that the way you set up your travel? You want to switch hotels, you know, in the same fucking city you're staying? But, I mean, I don't have any choice, so it's going to have to be cool. So I fucking take a cab over there. I get to the place at, like, fucking 5.30 in the morning. This is like planes, trains, and automobiles, right? I get there, and they're like, uh, what's it under? And I'm like, oh, no. And I'm like, Bill Burr, they're like, yeah, I don't see you. I'm like, William, eh, Rumpel fucking still scared. We don't get it, right? And the guy keeps going, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, well, I know it's not your fault. So now it's like fucking five in the goddamn morning. I got no place to stay. And he goes, well, the bellhop can take you over to the fucking Waffle House, right? <laughs> sorry if I make mic noise here. I got to move this laptop around because I want you to fucking hear this thing. So I go, yeah, I'm sorry if... uh you know, sorry about that. So the fucking, so now at like fucking 5.20 in the morning, I got no place to stay till 3 in the afternoon. I'm fucking dead tired. I couldn't sleep because old fatty cakes over there was drinking the fucking uh, Jack and Cokes all night, stepping over on me with his fucking pissing shit infested soaked socks. And now they don't have a room for me. And now I'm going to a Waffle House, right? So I get to the fucking Waffle House. It, you know, at fucking quarter to six in the morning, half expecting to see Jay-Z finishing the end of that song, you know, that old fucking thing, go to the Waffle House, then we're going to do it again, or however the fuck it is. Well, I guess he'd be walking out with them, right? The banger, and then kick her out at seven while Beyonce sings Lemonade in the background. I don't know what the fuck it is that those two do. I, I don't pretend to know. I'm an old man. Anyways, so I walk in there, a bunch of fucking characters, and... uh I'm bleary eyed. I'm not even fucking hungry, but I know I can't just sit in there like some sort of vagrant. So there were some eggs and a fucking waffle, and I'm sitting there, and there's this black guy in there wearing a suit, and he's he's like an anomaly. I don't know. How to, he's he's a black guy, but he isn't funny. <laughs> it's very rare. It's like an obese Asian. It's very rare that you see like obesity. You know, they, I don't know what they. 
They eat over in Asia, but I mean, whatever they're doing, they're doing it right with all the vegetables and the stir fries. So they keep you in phenomenal shape. And it was getting who, right? Every once you, it's very rare you meet a black guy who isn't funny. And this fucking guy is not funny, and he won't shut the fuck up. He keeps telling jokes, and he's laughing at his own fucking jokes. And I just want to, I want to stab myself with my fucking Waffle House fucking fork. So at one point, he just won't shut up. And then finally, one of the waitresses makes a joke. Well, and the other waitress, the other waitress goes, you know, don't be walking up behind me. You know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to basically fuck with me. And then the lady goes, ah, no, she goes, I don't fight pregnant women. And she wasn't pregnant. Okay. But admittedly, it was a decent joke. The unfunny black dude in the suit, you know, high pitched lap, stands up, runs out of the Waffle House, goes out to the front and does like a fucking 360 turn. And immediately the, the, the fucking, you know, the road weary comedian in me going like, all right, dude, it was funny. It wasn't that fucking funny. And uh, he comes back in and then I don't, I don't even know what the fuck to do. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with myself? I can't go to sleep. My phone's running out of batteries. I'm charging it there. It was just a fucking nightmare. So uh, I just start calling hotels. They're all fucking booked up. I don't know what's going on here in Nashville. If there's some sort of fucking banjo festival, I have no fucking idea, but there's no way some Jesus shit, you know, or some, you know, democratic or Republican convention. I have no fucking idea, but I cannot get a room. So, you know, I'm like, what do I do? So I called in the Opie and Jimmy show. I talked to them for a minute and then I was just like, what, what am I doing? So I finally called a cab and I just went over to the hotel that I was supposed to be at. And they were like, and they were like, oh yeah, you know, somebody called, said you, you know, fucking last night, if we could get you in, unfortunately we cannot, blah, 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 blah. So I at least checked my bags, you know, I felt like a fucking homeless person when I was in the Waffle House with the unfunny black dude. And I had my fucking bags on the inside of myself as I sat in the booth made for two fucking people, but I was sitting there by myself, right? So I get to the hotel, I at least checked in my bags and... They had a fucking, like a couch in the lobby of this place. They go, we're, we're already cleaning a room. And at this point, it's 6.30 in the morning. And I'm like, great. Whenever you can get me in, if I got to pay extra, I just don't give a shit, right? So they say, fine. So I go over and I just lay down on the couch, put my hat over my eyes, and I just pass out. I'm talking like. I wasn't even trying to be a gentleman. I had both feet up on the fucking couch. I was like, this is my bed. And I'm just sleeping there. And I just keep hearing people as they're getting, waking up, getting on with their day. Like, you want to get some smoothies? Oh, I hear they have such great eggs and all this shit. And then at one point, this guy walked by. You know those fucking assholes who whistle? I fucking, you know. I think I tweeted, nobody likes a whistler at some point. This, this fucking guy just came by whistling. You know, just it's just some random song. It's not even it's not even a fucking song. He's just whistling because that's what the fuck he does. Um, and uh, then I just completely I was just zonked out. And then all of a sudden I just feel somebody pushing me once, twice. And I fucking wake up and then they go, hey, Mr. Burr, your, your room's ready. I'm like thinking, oh, thank God. And I thought it was like 730 in the morning. I looked, it was like 10, 15. I've been sleeping there like a bum for like four hours. <laughs> So I finally ended up getting my fucking room. And uh, fortunately, it was one of these rooms that has the great curtains. I was able to close them. And it felt like midnight. And I'm, then I just fucking crashed. Woke up, met some friends that I've met along the way on the road and uh, took a drum lesson. Um, I hate dropping names on this, but like they're one of my favorite bands out there right now. Mute Math is based out of here. And uh, I got some lunch and Darren King actually gave me a, a little drum lesson. I still stink, but it was fucking like, I was beyond geeking out that I got to do it. So um, it was a bad day and I actually uh, ended up turning it around. And uh, I'll tell you what's funny is if you notice in the story, I never flipped out. Bear with me. Watch your ears. I got to click and drag this thing over. Just hang on a second. I apologize. Here we go. Here we go. It's almost over and it's over. I just realized I have no idea how much time I'm doing here. The fuck does this mean here? 447? 448. 448 what? Millimeters? 
Is this the metric system? Where the fuck's the timer? How do I tell how much time I'm doing? All right, you're just going to have to fucking deal with this. I apologize. Anyways, um, I got this weird thing when, like, major shit happens. Like, I don't, um, I don't flip out. Like, bigger shit like this, I don't flip out. Little shit bugs me. Like, 20 minutes ago, I'm going down in the elevator. And we just hit every fucking floor. And every fucking floor is another person coming on. A fucking full-grown adult wearing their name, a name tag around their neck. Like it's their first day of preschool. And everybody knows everybody. Hey, Carl, like the shorts. You wearing those to the meeting? You're crazy, right? Down one more floor. Every fucking floor. It's getting more and more packed. And then I have to sit there and listen to office humor, right? I'll tell you right now. If you think every once in a while a random black dude in a suit in a Waffle House isn't funny, wait till you're in a crowded elevator with a bunch of people that sit in cubicles all day. They have their fucking name tags around their necks. Listening to their jokes for eight fucking floors. That I, like, I was, by the time I got to the third floor, I was fucking livid. I was so fucking angry that the people around me could sense it. That when I went to get off the elevator, even women got out of the way. <laughs> so I'm not proud of that. But you would think I would have flipped out at, at the big dude stepping over me. Or I would have thought this anyways. Or I would have flipped out when my room wasn't ready. I would have flipped out. You know, even when I sent the text message to my travel person. I didn't curse. I didn't say that they fucked it up. I know somebody fucked it up. But I've learned in the past to not just slice the head off of the first person. I just went very like, you know, I don't know what happened. But this is not acceptable. People knew I was coming here for two months. I don't understand I've never had this problem before. This can't happen again. I'm now on my way to a Waffle House at 521 in the morning with all of my bags. And I just, you know, what, what else do you need to fucking say, right? So anyways, it all ended up working out. And uh, I got some great food out here. And uh, I ended up running into one of the uh, cast members of Nashville, which is my wife's favorite fucking show. Unfortunately, it just got canceled. And I ran into the guy, Charles Eston, and he was the coolest fucking guy ever. I was like, oh, my God, my wife loves your show. Is there any way I could get a picture? And he goes, no, put it on video. He goes, watch this. He goes, you do the intro. He was so fucking cool. So I just was like, hey, Nia, I'm in Nashville. I ran into one of the locals. And then it turns, and it's his face. And he just goes, hey, Nia, thanks for watching the show. She freaked out, and I got some good points. So thank you to Charles for making my fucking... Uh, Making my married life a little easier. So uh, so there you go. I don't know how much time that took up. According to uh, GarageBand, I'm at 540-something. 540 fucking of these. Oh, are they counting the little things? Was that 540 seconds? Am I really supposed to do that math? Have I, have I not done 10 minutes yet? 600 seconds is 10 minutes. Oh, Jesus. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. Sorry, i got to click on this thing here. It's not letting me do it. All right, here we go. A little uh, little advertising here. All right, ZipRecruiter, everybody. Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites, and now you can. Next, please mention the talking points below. Well, why wouldn't I? You wrote them. I'm going to read them. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100-plus job sites, including social media network networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Uh, find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over... 800,000 businesses. And right now, list my uh, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Hey! ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. All right. Tracker. Um, smart cast, smart phones, smart homes. Technology has made everything like wicked smart, dude. But losing your stuff Still makes smart people feel really stupid. He's wicked stupid. Tracker makes losing things a thing of the past. Tracker is a coin-sized device that locates misplaced keys, wallets, bags, computers, anything in seconds. 
Just pair Tracker to your smartphone, attach it to anything, and find its precise location with the tap of a button. It's that easy. Lose your phone, press the button on Tracker, and your phone rings, even when it's on silence. Silence. Silent, sorry. With over 1.5 million devices, Tracker has the largest crowd GPS network in the world, so your lost item shows up on a map, even if it's miles away. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listeners to this show get a special discount of 30% off your entire order. Go to the, spelled T-H-E-T-R-A-C-K-E-R dot com, the tracker dot com. Enter the promo code BURR. The hardest thing you'll ever have to find is their website. Go to Tracker. The tracker.com right now and enter your promo code BURR for 30% off your entire order. Again, heck, that's the tracker, the tracker.com promo code BURR. And lastly, but hopefully not, okay, lastly, but not least. All right. Boil and branch. Oh, sorry. Ball and branch. Or I don't know what the B-O-L-L and branch. All right. As you set out to improve yourself, there is one simple thing you can do every day to help you be in your best to be your best in every situation, that's getting a good night's sleep. Jesus Christ, Lord knows I never do that. Ball and Branch delivers the rest you need wrapped up in their super comfortable luxury linens. And they do it right. They're the first bedding company to be fair trade certified, which means that your sheets come from the work of happy hands, not crying children in sweatshops. In beautiful packaging made entirely from recycled and sustainable materials. You can only get their sheets in one place. That's bowlandbrand.com, where you know you're paying for quality and not department store overhead. You're getting $1,000 sheets for just a couple hundred bucks. Go to ball, that's B-O-L-L and branch.com, and they'll let you let you try them risk-free for 30 days. If you don't love them, you can send them back. You have nothing to lose, and it gets even better. Go to ballandbranch.com today for 20% off your entire order. Sheets, towels, blankets, duvet covers, everything, plus free shipping. And all their products come beautifully packaged in their signature boxes. Go to ballandbranch.com today for 20% off your entire order and use promo code BURR. Ballandbranch.com, promo code BURR. And mercifully, that's the end. Hey, i got to ask you guys a question here. And I apologize for all the ex- ex- extraneous fucking noise, if that's the right word here. Um... I went into the uh, the drugstore out here because I forgot my leave to help to help my inflamed sciatica here and um, sciatic nerve, I should say. And um, I went in there, and there's this campaign that red nose fucking fun thing, whatever. And it's all these, it's some sort of charity, and it's all these fucking people, famous people, wearing the red nose. So I'm going, what the, what is this? I keep seeing this. So I start reading the box and it says Walgreens will donate 100% of everything that they gain, collect or whatever to this red nose camp, red nose fund. 100% is going to this red nose fund. So I'm like, all right, what is it? What is the fund? Nowhere on the box will it say what the fuck it is. It doesn't say what it's raising money for. Nowhere on the box. So I asked the lady behind the counter, and I go, so what is this for? If I buy one of these red noses, what is this for? She goes, oh, you get one of these. And it was like a little fucking gift certificate off a of fucking chapstick or something. I go, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't like what I get if I buy a red nose. Like, where does the money go? Who am I helping out? She goes, oh, I don't know. It's like my first day. And I just laughed. I was like, well, I'm going to start the fucking green hat fund and everything's going to go to me. She sort of like, I guess, half-ass laughed. I should have told it to the black guy in the suit in the fucking Waffle House. He would have ran out of the place, done 15 cartwheels and come back in. Dude, it's not that funny. Um, I'm telling you, man, that's the new... I'm not saying the red nose thing is a scam, but it's pretty fucking shifty. Pretty shady that I'm sitting there looking at all these celebrities and it's just the red nose fund. And there's nothing on there saying where the money goes. You know, isn't shouldn't that red nose thing bring up a couple of red flags there? Um, I think that that's the new... There's two new things going on in this country that are actually generating income for people. The legal selling of weed at the state level and um, nonprofits. Nonprofit is like the new hardware store. 
Like back in the day, you had to open a store and actually sell shit. And nowadays, you can just start fucking come up with a mirror, a mirror, no, a ribbon, a fucking wristband, a red fucking nose, have people dump ice water over their fucking head, whatever it is. You know, some of them are legit. I, I got this feeling most of them aren't. And I kind of feel like, if you're old like me and you remember the late 80s when all those televangelists were on TV and they went to like this national fucking level and they just made hundreds of millions of dollars before it all just came out that it was just this giant fucking cash grab. I feel like all those fucking nonprofits, it, it has to be going in that direction. And how all these sporting uh, sports leagues get in bed with all of these fucking people. Um, I don't know. Maybe they have enough money. Maybe they have enough money to keep it silent, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of done. I give money to St. Jude's Hospital. That's it. Everything else, I just, I, I don't have the fucking time to figure out whether or not you're a fucking scam or not because I gave to that wounded warrior shit. I gave so many, I gave so much fucking money. I used to donate like 10% of the shit I made in the advertising to, to those fucking people. And then people started sending me these, these articles and the next thing you know, they're getting investigated and all that type of shit. And I don't even, I, I just stopped following the story and I just stopped giving them money because I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't even fucking want to know. But like, I just feel like the future of helping people out is literally walking up to a wounded warrior. Like finding out where the fuck they live and be like, what do you need? Go out and get it or you raise the money and then you give it to them. But then if I raise it, then do I become one of those people and be like, oh, we had a little bit of overhead. And all of a sudden I have some sick ass drum room and I just bring a fucking box of Band-Aids to a fucking veteran. I mean, that's what seems like what all these, I don't know. I'm, I'm a cynical son of a bitch. But my new shit is I want to just, I'm, I, I still love doing charities. I love doing benefits. I did one the other night for like a fucking, it was for like a private school. It's like it's a fucking private school. Like, you guys don't need money. It's like, oh, it's for the people who can't afford it. It's like, is it? Who knows what it is? You're just saying what it is, and then what? Then all of a sudden, they, uh, who gets the money? Where does it go? Where does that person go? Are they in Tahiti? Are they helping somebody out? Nobody fucking knows. It's brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. Um, I hope that red nose thing is, is on the label. It's on the label. It's on the level. Sorry. I didn't get a good night's sleep. You know, those hotel couches aren't, ain't what they fucking used to be there. Um, I honestly have no no idea how much time I've done here. I'm up to like 838 of these seconds here. I'm just going to say there's seconds, right? Well, let's see here. There's 600 seconds in 10 minutes. So that means there'd be 1,800 seconds and a half. There's no fucking way that's only a second. What if it's two seconds? I got to be coming up. I'm going to say it's two seconds. Fuck it. It's two seconds. So all I got to do is just make it up to 900, and I got another 49 to go. Oh, it's fucking easy. Let's talk a little playoff hockey, everybody. Did anybody watch? Uh, I keep missing just how busy I am. I keep missing um, that, uh, that Tampa Bay-Pittsburgh series. I caught the end of uh, uh, game three where the Penguins were up, and then they gave him a couple of right there threads to put it out of reach. And I, I fucking sent a buddy of mine in Pittsburgh uh, a text congratulating him because as much as I don't like what the Penguins cheap shot artists have done to the Bruins, uh, you know, I don't take it to the level that I don't want my friends' teams to win. So I, I said congratulations. And the second I sent it, Tampa Bay scored one. And I felt like I jinxed him for half a second. But um, I've been watching the Blues and – uh in San Jose Sharks, and uh, this is fucking huge tonight for the Blues because San Jose obviously adjusted to whatever the fuck the Blues were doing in game one, and uh, so now Blues have to adjust to whatever San Jose was doing because San Jose pretty uh, dominated pretty much wire to wire the last game, and uh, I don't know. It's making me nervous as a, as a total bandwagon Blues fan. They obviously got to win this one. That's such a stupid thing to say. Is, it, is, it, is this one a big one, Bill? Should they not go down three games to one? You fucking dope. 
Um, big shout out to all the soccer fans over there in Europe that got so fucking annoyed at everything that I said and think I shouldn't talk about uh, um, sports over in Europe. Uh, you guys all make a great point because I don't watch them and I don't know anything about them. But uh, what you fail to understand is how much I enjoy irritating the shit out of people that I've never met before. So I stand by what the fuck I said. You guys should have some sort of a, in the Premier League, you should have a fucking playoff playoff. The fact that somebody can win a fucking championship because another team came to a, like a tie and like that's it. Just imagine uh, every fucking movie about soccer is always there's the big fucking game, right? And then somebody comes down and scores a goal. It's not like the stars of the movie standing around waiting for somebody to fucking, you know, have a 1-1 tie with somebody. Is this sitting there in fucking street clothes or sitting in an apartment <laughs> doing jello shots with each other? I don't know. I'm just fucking with you. I know. Remember that Sylvester Stallone movie, Victory, ended them with them walking away from the game. Oh, no, no. They were going to do it. They wanted to escape, and then they came back because they wanted to beat the guys. And if that was actually based on anything real, um, the game would have ended, and then they would have won. They would have been brought back to the prison camp, and they would have been beaten to death. But instead, what ended up happening was they came back, and they, they beat the Nazis, these prisoners, allied prisoners of war. And then they fucking, uh, they just walked out with the crowd that stormed onto the field and gave them extra clothes and shit. Um, I don't know. I'm sure it was based on a true story, but uh, I've seen enough of the Germans and their respect for life outside of their own country. Um, for people who are non-German, I think that they would have just opened up on the crowd. <laughs> so I'm calling bullshit. That movie was called Victory, by the way. By the way, it was a great, it was, I actually really enjoyed that movie. But it was when I first got cable, so who knows? Um, anyways, is that is that a half hour? I'm up to 962 seconds or uh, 1,800. I have no fucking idea. You know what? I'm going to find out here because I'm going to have to do the Monday morning podcast like this one also. And uh, my timing will be a little bit better on the next one because I'll know exactly how much time I'm doing. I just don't understand why this would, fucking thing wouldn't tell me. How much time? But I'm not going to start hitting buttons because it's going to be irritating to you if you're listening to it on a fucking with headphones. So anyways, that's it for the Thursday afternoon podcast. Just checking in on you. Hope you cunts have a great weekend. And uh, here's a little bit of music. And uh, enjoy the uh, clips from uh, podcasts from years gone by. And of course, I fucking can't. Hey, where, there it is.
Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's the Monday Morning Podcast. And uh, a gloomy, rainy, depressing Monday morning here in Los Angeles. Um, cloudy days are extra depressing out here because uh, it's usually sunny. And it's what you expect out here. I feel like I'm going to go into a Karen Carpenter song. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Really? Is that a reason to stop eating? I don't think it is. Wow. Wow, I just started off real mean, didn't I? Well, well, shit. Well, who gives a fuck? It's a gloomy Monday and uh, I attacked a dead anorexic. How do you like that? That's how I start the Monday morning podcast. So there you go. If you're new to my page, um, I do one of these um, every Monday morning. Did I say Monday or did I say Monday? Every Monday morning I do a podcast and uh, evidently I attack some uh, defenseless dead person. That's how I, I started off. Only if it's overcast. If it was sunny, it would have I would have a completely different vibe. But basically I do one of these uh, every Monday and um, I answer questions that m- some of my 14 listeners send in. Um, lately I've been giving out advice. People have been asking me advice. And sometimes I ask questions. And uh, hopefully in the end of it, uh, nobody learns anything and, you know, you've wasted 15 minutes of your life. That's what I'm trying to do. And speaking of wasting 15 minutes of your life, I am actually sitting in my apartment, my little villa. And uh, it really made me sound like I had a pool boy, didn't it? Um, My little villa here, and I'm waiting for a plumber. And, uh, you know, I don't want to judge the guy because I never met him, but this motherfucker. This guy was supposed to be here at 9 o'clock in the goddamn morning, all right? It's two minutes past the hour of 10 o'clock. Now, I don't know what time zone you live in, what world you're in, but in my little neck of the woods, 10.02, now it's 10.03. It just turned on my cable box. It's fucking 10.03. 10.03 is not 9 o'clock. And God damn it, I want some answers. I'm ready to ball my hand up into a fist and fucking pound it on my coffee table like uh, like some like that guy in the Spider-Man comic books, who's who's the guy at the Daily Planet, Jameson, huh? With his fucking uh, he had such a weird way of going gray, didn't he? Just the side of his head turned white, all the way around, and then on top it was jet black. And he'd always be chomping on a fucking cigar, you know. Just I don't want to attack Stan Lee, but you know it's really you know I got it. He's the boss. All right, what am I doing? Okay, all right, let, let's let's fucking get back to this. Let's get down to brass tacks here, okay? Why am I waiting for a plumber? I'll tell you why I'm waiting for a plumber, because for some reason, my sink, when the water comes out lately, it smells like swamp ass. Um, I don't know what it is. There, there's definitely a funk coming out of my sink, and it's not coming out of the kitchen sink. So I've ruled out some sort of outside source. There's obviously, you know, because it was coming from the street, the uh, main water line, I, I think it would every, it'd be fucking everything. It'd be coming out of everything, right? Uh, do I have any plumber listeners out there, you know? Can you help me out? Because evidently this fuck is not showing up. It's 10.04 and he's still not here. See, you know, this is why the United States of America is starting to lag behind China and all that. I bet in China when you call a plumber... 48 of them show up at fucking 858 begging you. They don't even have a wrench. You know what I mean? Somebody just fucking bites down the pipe and three other guys just start spinning the guy around. You know? But not in America. I got to wait for this motherfucker to show up. I'll tell you what sucks too is I don't know if they act stupid, but it just, that that, that makes it hurt even more. Is when they, you, you can't figure out how to fix a sink and then some guy comes up my mama done told me, you know, with his fucking ass hanging out. He knows how to fix it. That's why I've started to become handy, okay, because I actually sat down and I analyzed it the other day, and, you know, fixing a sink is not a gift. You know what I'm saying? It's a skill. It's something you learn. This, inventing the sink, okay, or the toilet, like that, that guy, uh, Eddie Crapper, whatever his fucking name was. All I know is his last name was Crapper. Okay? And because of him, we don't have to shit outside. And what's, what thanks does he get? His last name becomes slang for taking a dump. 
Tell me he didn't die a bitter rich man. Jesus Christ. You know, some people, man, it's just, you know, they, they, they do such good, and, and, and what do they get out of it, huh? Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I bet the, you, your last name was Crapper. But every female in that family could not wait to get married and just get away from that goddamn last name. I mean, they probably took the first thing that came down the pike. That'd be a great thing to Google and go check out. The amount of women with the last name Crapper that married the first trucker that fucking fingered him on a fucking Tuesday night. Jesus Christ. Just because they were shameful of their, their maiden name. Which probably led to some sort of child abuse and alcoholism. And that's probably another reason why it's 10.06 and the fucking plumber still isn't here. I really hope he shows up halfway through this, okay? Because you guys have watched me give this guy a piece of my fucking mind. And I won't curse either, so he can't leave. What is he doing? What could he be? What's, what's he doing, huh? Is he driving? You know he's got a van. If you're, you know, if, you, if you're a carpenter, you got a pickup. If you're, if you're a plumber, you got a van. You know, because in case it rains, you can't have it go on the pipes and they get all rusted. I don't know why. What, what is he doing? Huh? Is he at the Army-Navy store buying some more dickies? You know, is that what they do? What do they trade their underwear for their dickies so their fucking crack of their asses hanging out? Ten oh seven. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So that's the deal. I started. I started to learn how to fix shit. Okay. I fixed the leaky faucet the other day, which is unbelievably easy, but it makes no goddamn sense. You you fucking take the handle off, and there's there's this little rubber stopper with this spring in there. And that's all it is. You take it out and you stick the motherfucker back. You stick a new one in there and magically it stops leaking. I don't get it. It's not like it's in the pipe. I, I have no idea why it works, but uh, it, it works. And I went on the Internet. Within three seconds, I learned how to do it, okay? My ass wasn't hanging out of the back of my pants, and I didn't charge somebody fucking $200. And I was on time. Damn, motherfucker. Okay. So anyways, I do one of these things every single week. And uh, people ask me questions, and I hype upcoming gigs, like the fact that I'm going to be at, uh, this week, I'm going to be at uh, Zany's in Chicago. And uh, and actually, downtown Chicago on the 14th and 15th. On the 16th, I'll be in in, uh, St. Charles, and on the 17th, I'll be in Vernon Hills, Illinois. And i got to tell you something. I uh, really, really enjoy doing... uh, this gig, at, uh, especially the downtown Chicago. It's this nice, small, I mean, it looks like a walk-in closet. The place is so small, and uh, I don't know, man. It's like an old-school comedy club, and all these old comedy photos, they they just left them up for like two. It's like a fucking museum. I love the place, and I always have great shows there. So, And I'm going to the Cubs game on the 15th, baby. be like my third or fourth time going to Wrigley Field, you know? And here I am bitching about a plumber. I really ought to count my blessings here. I'm going to a fucking Cubs game this week. Okay, and continuing on. On the uh, 29th, May 29th through uh, June 1st, I'm making my triumphant return to uh, New York City, Caroline's Comedy Club. Um, I got a whole brand new hour. Last time I was out there, I taped my uh, my one-hour comedy special which I have information about that I will be giving out later on in this podcast. Huh? Look at me. Look at me teasing it a little bit, making you stick around. Huh? Don't roll your eyes at me. I know what I'm doing. I'm playing the fucking game. Uh, let's see. And what else we got here? And then you go into June. And I actually forgot about this date. I thought I had a couple uh, couple weeks off after Caroline's, but evidently not. I'm going right back out to Raleigh, North Carolina. Good Nights Comedy Club. How the fuck did I have a date there, man? I'm turning 40 on the 10th. I planned on coming home on the 2nd, getting into the fetal position, doing some crunches, and not eating any carbs until June 10th when I turned 40 goddamn years old. But no, I have to fly across this country and go to Raleigh, North Carolina, the desolate. The frightening Raleigh, North Carolina. The what the fuck happened to the downtown area? So, you know, it's a beautiful part of the, 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 the of the state during the day. Raleigh, North Carolina, downtown. I'm not talking about NC State. NC State, that that place is nice. I actually went there for two semesters in '87, '88, and if you want to know why I only went there for two semesters, 
go online and Google Bill Burr's fucking NC State uh, fucking transcript, and you'll figure out why I left after that. But the downtown area, that's one of those downtowns where, you know, you could tell at some point in the past, the history, it was it was a place, it was hopping, it was jumping. They were making their own moonshine down there, right? And then, you know what happened? You know what? I bet the the dreaded Walmart. That's what happened. They built a Walmart. Then they then they made a mall, the Crabtree Mall. Is that where you guys go? And the whole downtown area just it's a fucking ghost town past 601 in the evening, and I'm just left down there by myself downtown in the fucking hotel. I hate it. I need people around me. I'm a city person. Goddamn people all fucking leave, and then I'm down there. And I got to go out and hail the cab, and all stuff is just homeless people. It's like that fucking what is that movie? Twenty eight days. That's what I feel like I'm in. I feel like I'm in a zombie movie. So, if you work in downtown Raleigh and you're going to go to one of my shows, why don't you hang out at work? Just hang out at work and go straight to the club. So when I walk out to get a cab, I can actually see another fucking human being that looks like they don't have hepatitis. All right, and uh, the next gig I have coming up is uh, June 19th through the 21st. I'm going to be at the Punchline in Atlanta. Uh, that's another one of my favorite comedy clubs. Look at that. Zany's, Caroline's, Good Nights, Punchline, Atlanta. I like all of those clubs. I like all of them. They're just good clubs, good, clean, fun, and I'm going to come in there with my potty mouth. June 19th through the 21st, and... Uh, I don't know. I've been to Atlanta a lot lately, so I'm hoping uh, I'm going to start to build the following out there. I always seem to get a good turnout. And i got a whole nother new hour for you, you sons of bitches. And um, then after that, you guys, you're on your own. Just go to my uh, website. Uh, you can click on it right there if you're looking at my MySpace page. I, manage, I imagine most of you um, are secretly listening to this in your cubicle, and you've probably reduced the window. Is that what you did? And now you're sitting there looking at, what do you look at in a cubicle, huh? What are you looking at, a spreadsheet? Uh, some sort of accounting thing with with assets and liabilities? And you're rubbing your chin as if you're not listening to me? Huh? Well, that's good. You know what? I think that's a good thing. You know what you should do today? You should take a magnet and run it right down the back of your boss's hardware. Not his hardware, his fucking hard drive. That's what you do. And if he walks into the office right in the middle of you doing that, what you do is you smile, big open smile, which causes his defenses to go down, and then you fling that magnet at him like a fucking Chinese star, and you hit him right in the forehead. Now, the great thing about knocking somebody out is, um, as far as I know, as far as my experience with getting knocked out, is you forget the previous three minutes. So as long as you fire that fucking magnet at him before the three minutes are up, he won't even remember what happened. But the key is is to do it in a manner before he can be like, you know, yell your name and say, what are you doing in this office? You know? Jennifer, fucking whatever. I'm so bad at coming up with fucking phony names. God damn it. Jennifer, uh, we'll go with Sullivan. There's a, there's a fucking basic name. That's why I can't write scripts. The stories are always good, but my... Fucking name, you know, the hero's name, Joe Smith. Really, I'm the worst. Um, that's why I can never commit crime. I never could come up with a good alias. What's your name? Bob. Bob what? Avenue. All right, Robert, why don't you get in the back of the fucking car? But I didn't do anything. All right, let's get on to the... Uh, have I ever been arrested? Yes, yes, I have. Yes, I have. I have been arrested. Drinking and driving. Uh, back in December of 1989. And if you'd like to hear more of the story, tune in next week. Um, oh, wait a minute. What did I say? Oh, I know. That's right. I'm going to tell you guys when my DVD is coming out. Uh, but, but first, we're going to answer some of the uh, some of the questions that people have asked me. Um, here's a question. I might have answered it before. Okay, podcast question number 1A. This is how many I have. I actually went into some old emails, and I found a bunch of other ones so that I didn't get to. So who knows? Here we go. Question 1A. Bill, have you ever thought about going to Iraq to entertain the military? I've served in the Gulf War, and we liked having entertainers come see us. If you have, ar- if you have already gone, what was it like for you? You would fucking kill. Um, no, I have not. 
I have not gone over there for the simple. You know, the only way I would go over there is if I went through six weeks of boot camp first, like you did. And uh, you know, they gave, they taught me how to fucking kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's like not knowing how to swim, and then doing a fucking, you know, entertain some people on a tugboat during during choppy water. You know what I mean? That that to be honest with you, I would love to go to Iraq, but I'd love to go over there when it was fucking peaceful, and uh, experience the culture over there when there are no insurgents. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. You know what I mean? I know they fly into the fucking base, and I'm surrounded by a bunch of Marines and that type of shit. But you know, I just watched too many Will Smith movies where he's the only guy left, and I, I don't know how to fire a gun. So, uh, you know, I don't have that kind of balls. Like Bob Hope would go, you know, he went all over Vietnam with like a fucking golf bag and an umbrella. I guess he never died, right? Maybe that should be, uh, you know, but you know what? Chaos theory. I don't think he'd get killed on the base, but, you know, I'd be one of those guys, yeah. Fucking, you know, the plane I was in would get shot. And somehow everyone in the plane would survive, but I'd fall out the bottom through the goddamn... Look, I'll entertain the troops, okay? I've done it a bunch of times, but I've done it over here. I, I, don't, I don't do away games. I'm like Roger Clements when he played for the Astros, okay? I'm on steroids, I'm cheating on my wife, and I don't fucking pitch in Iraq. I'll be honest with you, I'm terrified to go over there. There you go, okay? That's why you're a fucking Marine. And I'm a civilian, and I respect you. And, uh, you know, I'll fucking... Uh, you can listen to these podcasts in Iraq. You know what I mean? What am I, what am I fucking Chuck Norris? Look at me getting all defensive, because I don't have the balls to go over. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I don't, don't want to go over there and then somehow get kidnapped and end up being, you know, rocking back and forth gently in an orange jumpsuit as they're, you know, as they're reading shit about Allah, and then they saw my fucking head off, and I'm really sitting there going like, ah, you know, what, what, why did I come over here? Um, okay, moving on. Uh, question number one. That was 1A. Okay. Uh, did you do a voice on Grand Theft Auto 4? There was a biker dude that sounds just like you. If it wasn't you, you got to check it out. Actually, yes, I did. I did do a uh, voiceover on that, and it was a big thrill to do that. And i got to give a big thanks to, uh, to Laszlo for hooking me up and uh, Jimmy Norton for hooking me up with the Opie and Anthony show because that's how I met Laszlo, and that's how I got in there to do the voiceover. Um, see how that works? Uh, question number two. I notice you have Strike Force MMA in your top friends. I was wondering who are a couple of your favorite MMA fighters. Um, that's just a friend I accepted, and then I guess they switched their picture. Mixed martial arts. Um, I don't know. I do watch the. I, I watch. Uh, what do I watch? I watch the UFC fights. I watch. Uh, I watch their reality show, which of course I can't remember the name of. The Ultimate Fighter, this this season where they have to fight their way just to get into the house. And uh, what the fuck's his name there? The Junkyard Dog. I'm getting them fucking confused with old-time wrestlers. Who's the guy who knocked out Chuck Liddell? The fucking guy who goes, ow, and then kicks the shit out of you. Where's the chain and shit, you know, beats the fuck out of people. Randy Jackson? Yeah, and then the other guy with the fucking... You don't want to fuck with me, cauliflower ears? You know, I actually have a theory that if you just... You don't even need to get the black belt. If you just have some somebody box your ears and you get those cauliflower ears, no one's going to fuck with you in a bar. Because they just look at those fucked up ears, those exploded vegetable ears, and they're just like, that guy could fucking snap my neck, choke me out, and give me a, the Superman punch with a flying knee all at the same fucking time. Um, did I even answer the question? Who are some of my favorite ones? Uh, I liked Matt Sarah. I loved the shit he talked about. Uh, and what's his face? Uh, what, St. Pierre? That's the kind of shape I would like to be in for my 40th birthday that evidently I'll be contemplating in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. All right, you know what? This podcast is starting to seem long, so let me let me blow through these next fucking questions. All right, number three. Bill, did you hook up with any of the stewardesses at the airport from last week's podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hooked up with all three of them, and they, we had a fucking foursome right out in the open, you know, and that didn't violate any new fucking Patriot Act. No, I, I, I didn't, and uh, thanks for bringing that up, okay? 
I don't know. I was going to go up and say what's up to them, but there was something about their blue pantyhose that just I really found it intimidating. Question number four. Uh, I was wondering, since you're such a big, such a, a bug sports fan, a big sports fan, what is your best sports memory from your childhood? Um... Well, fuck that. Let's go with something funnier then. Uh, how about uh, he, he, here's my best uh, my best. Well, okay, here's a good sports memory when the uh, when the New England Patriots beat the the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. Um, what was it? 1985, the year we got we got destroyed in the Super Bowl. We were a wild card. And uh, that's why we beat the Jets, and then the next week we beat, look at me with the memory, we beat the Jets, and then we beat the, the Raiders, and I went down to the the airport in Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, it was like me and like only 70 other people at this point, you know, and we met all the players as they got off the plane. All the old school guys, Julius Adams, I remember somebody reaching over and slamming him really hard on his shoulder, like hitting him way too hard, and he fucking looked at me like I did it. And I was like, oh, it wasn't me. It was the guy behind me. But uh, that was the first time I saw a bunch of athletes up close. Uh, Tony Eason, completely expressionless. I remember he was wearing a butterscotch members-only jacket. I swear to God. Um, And he looked like he was on his way to Home Depot. And right then I should have known that he was going to get crushed in the Super Bowl. But... um, I would say that. You know what? Bruins games, the first Bruins games I went to, the Boston Garden. I used to always go to Bruins Canadians. I actually went to that bench-clearing brawl. If you go on uh, YouTube, it's the one where Chris Nyland, uh, was that the game where he hit Rick Middleton in the teeth with his stick, and then as he was walking off, that's right, he walked off the ice, and then he pushed uh, Ken Lindsman, who chased him down. And next thing you know, there was a bench-clearing brawl, and Terry O'Reilly in his suit was grabbing onto somebody, and Nevin Marquardt fought. That was a good time. All right, I'm just babbling here. I'm just waiting for my plumber. 1023, motherfucker's still not here. Okay, uh, wow, I'm getting bored with myself here. Number five, uh, what do you think of the comedy genre anti-humor? Like the type by Neil Hamburger and Ted. I I don't know those guys. I watched them, and uh, they seem funny to me. You know, I don't know. It's not anti-humor, is it? I don't know. Who gives a fuck? All right. Uh, so I was watching one of the videos. And who was throwing food at you? I already answered that. That's a donut. It's a donut hole. If you see the video on my page, it was a group of people. They were uh, advertisers. They all worked at the same place. I started trashing them, and they threw a donut hole at me. And evidently, I didn't give a fuck. Um, number seven. When you have these horrible thoughts about people, are you able to keep your face stoic? Mine wrinkles up, and I don't notice until the person looks at me. If so, how do you play it off? Um, No, I'm usually cursing, like what I think is under my breath, but out loud, and then they look right at me. I literally walk through like an airport going, look at this fucking guy. What the fuck kind of shirt is that? And I think I'm kind of doing it in my head or whispering, but I'm saying it loud enough that they look right at me, and then I look away, which is pretty pathetic. Okay which is, you know what, this podcast is getting pathetic. It's way too long. Let's get to the thing. Okay, my DVD, dun, 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 the big announcement, is going to be coming out in September of 2008. And the my DVD, my uh, one-hour special, will also be shown on Comedy Central in September of 2008. So I have all summer to write some, uh, to write some new jokes, which I already have. I already got a whole new hour. So, uh, all right, this podcast, how many minutes is this? Yeah, this podcast is really fucking long, and I didn't even get to half the shit I wanted to talk about. I want to tell you guys how I was back uh, to drinking Budweiser. I've come full circle. Actually, I started off with Michelob Light, then I quickly went to Budweiser, and then throughout the years, I switched to vodka, then I ended up with fucking Johnny Walker Black, and now I'm right back to Budweiser again. And uh, I guess that was the moment after Johnny Walker Black where I was supposed to admit that I had a problem and stop cold turkey, but evidently I'm going to run the cycle all over again and go back and start dating some of the same psychos that I I dated. You know what? Next week I'll tell you the story about me getting arrested for drinking and driving back in fucking June. No, December of 1989. I was on my way back from Boston College to go watch the Patriots play fucking the Los Angeles Rams. Because I had season tickets. Who knew they were going to be 5-11? and 11? 
Um, anyways, so that's the podcast. <laughs> you know what? It started off fucking. It started off strong. I was trashing the art of plumbing and and a dead Karen Carpenter, and then it just sort of tapered off. I, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I should have fucking quit while I was ahead. But anyways, thanks to everyone who listens to these podcasts. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you would, actually, you know something? If you enjoy my podcast, could you please let people know about them? Because, uh, you know, I burn up a lot of minutes every week on my fucking cell phone. I'm getting brain cancer. And I'm talking to, like, 15 people. And um, I'd like to break 20. If I could get it up to 20 people before June 10th when I turn 40, um, that would make me feel a whole lot better. All right? So uh, thanks to everybody who uh, who has been listening. And uh, sorry to all the Karen Carpenter fans. I'm sorry to people who are plumbers. Actually, you know what? I'm not sorry. Okay, I'm not fucking sorry because one of your I'll, I'll I'll be sorry when some of you guys from the plumbers union have a little talking to. It's 10:20 fucking seven. I started this podcast at 10:03, so this is a 24 minute podcast. I was hoping that the guy was going to walk in during the middle of it. We could have a little reality show moment, but he didn't. You know what probably happened? He probably walked up halfway through the stairs and heard me bitching about fucking plumbers on my podcast. And didn't hear me talking to anybody, so he thought I was crazy or I was berating my wife, my non-existent wife. Oh, God, look at the gloom. Look at the fucking gloom out the window. All right, that's it. So uh, please come out and see me uh, in Chicago at Zany's this week or at Caroline's in New York City at the end of the month or at uh, Good Nights in Raleigh, North Carolina or the Punchline in Atlanta, Georgia next month. All right, you motherfuckers. I have a CD up on uh, iTunes called Emotionally Unavailable, the expanded edition. Why don't you uh, go there, buy it, buy it for a friend, buy it for a plumber, fucking uh, break the CD in half, stab him in his jugular if he's late. And that's it. That's the Monday Morning Podcast. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>